Welcome to our time. Freemasons or masonry refers to fraternal organisations that trace their origin to the local guilds of stonemasons that from the end of the 13th century regulated the qualifications of stonemasons and their interaction with authorities and clients. Well, that's what Wikipedia says, but how does it work today? You know, it's often associated with old men, but our guest is Leighton Jacks, who is a Freemason and a young one as well. Welcome. Hi, Malcolm. How are you? I'm very well. We've known each other for quite a long time. We've been trying to get to talk to you about, first of all, why you became a Freemason and what attracted you to it, and really what Freemasonry is and what does it do? Because I guess people see it as a bit of a, a secret organisation, I suppose. Well, just on that, with it being a secret organisation, it's not really a secret that we're there. Our buildings are quite prominent. Oh, that's true. Yes. They're there. They have the square and compass. Yes. You know, it's no Can't secret that it, we really. meet there. Exactly. Um, but it's what we do that has the element of secrecy to it. And I think that's what makes it a little bit more attractive. Right. OK. Well, let's, let's talk about that in a minute. Let's talk about why you became one, because I like this story. This is... This is what families should all be about. I Absolutely. Think. And it's the similar story for a lot of other young Freemasons that we're seeing joining at the moment. So mm. I joined because of my grandfather. Mm -hmm. uh, sadly, he passed away when I was very, very young. So I grew up seeing this photo of him standing there quite proud and prominent with his dicky bow tie on, his suit jacket and his apron with this big blue collar and some jewels in the pocket. And, and here's the photo of him. Look at that. Yep, so that's him. Um, so I grew up seeing this photograph throughout my entire childhood on almost every pedestal within my family homes. Right. Uh, my grandmothers, my aunt, my mum. Because everyone was very proud of the fact. Absolutely. And he was proud um, to be a Freemason as well, joining back in Ireland and then joining right. here when he moved um, and immigrated with the family. Right. Um, so, so you saw becoming part of the organisation, so to speak, a link to him? Did you? Absolutely. It was a connection with him that I could have right. because I didn't get that connection throughout my childhood that most people would have with a grandfather. And through that, I got to meet people that knew him right. and that remembered him as well. So I grew friendships oh, okay. with some of those older, older men as well. And, you know, we really got along quite well. Actually, that's really interesting because that is something that a lot of us in life sort of miss. Uh, it's people who knew the relative mm. uh, because you have an opinion of the relative because they're a relative. But often you don't sort of really ask about their past. It's really about your interaction with them, but not what they've done before. Exactly. And, you know, you always mm. say when you go to someone's funeral, you learn more about them at their funeral That's than when true. you did when they were alive. That's um, true. And we see a lot of that within Freemasonry as well. Right. But at the same time, knowing other, other guys or meeting other guys who knew, they'd know all of their quirks, their funny stories, the things the family yep. probably don't know. Because it didn't happen with the family, it happened with them. And even I can see and share a lot of those funny stories with a lot of guys in Freemasonry as well. Right, so. right. Do you, uh, did you learn something that you thought, gosh, I never knew that. How, how, how would I not know that? How would the family not pass that on? Well, he was very administrative within the Lodge. So um, the Lodge that I'm now a member of, Lodge mm -hmm. Fraternity, he was Lodge Secretary for quite a long time. Oh, OK. Um, and then I found out after looking through some records and talking to other people that he'd moved to a few other lodges and helped support some as well. Because the lodges are sort of independent, aren't they? Well, they're independent of each other, but they all come under the banner of the Grand of Lodge of South Australia yeah. and the Northern Territory. Right. It's sort of a governing authority. And That's here in the slice down the middle. But, of course, it's an international organisation. Absolutely. There's Grand Lodges, there's lodges in almost every part of the world. Um, right. And they're all completely separate from each other. They operate their own way, their own rules. Oh, that's what I meant, yeah. So they are sort of separated in that sense, but... Yes, it's, everyone's under the same banner. And we recognise each other as being Freemasons as well, which is the unique thing about Freemasonry. And that's because if you go to another club, do you have entry to that club because you're a Freemason? Is it that sort of... There sort are of... some little tricky rules around it, but a general rule of thumb, if you are a Freemason and can prove yourself to be a Freemason, you're admitted as a visitor and welcomed as a guest. That's what I mean, Everywhere yeah. in the world. Right, uh, yes, yeah. And that means, really, you've got friendships everywhere who have people that think the same, I guess. Well, there's a saying in Freemasonry, there's no such thing as strangers, only friends you've never met before. OK. <laughs> Good thing. So... Uh, as you're growing up, uh, you know about this, but how did you actually make the connection to become a Freemason? 
So I inquired online on our website. Um, mm -hmm. So all Grand Lodges have a website that anyone can inquire for um, to become a member. And I got put towards a local lodge within the area um, that suited the time of day, uh, the time of week, the month. Um, so I went along, met a few people. They came out to the house and met my parents. Um, we had a conversation and they said, you know, is this the right thing for you? Um, you know, they don't want to waste my time and I don't want to waste their time. So, you know, that conversation happened and then I went along to the initiation ceremony and became a Freemason. Okay. It was the initiation a complex thing? Did you have to learn a lot or was it just a process to go through? Because I know I can't find out what happens. As an initiate, you don't have to know anything. That's the beauty of it. Oh, okay. You're guided around the room and instructed on what to do and where to go and how to do it. It's sort of like a theatrical drama um, in a way where you learn a ritual and you present that ritual through ceremony. Right. And it's those ceremonies that make Freemasons unique um, from other types of social clubs and associations. Right, but, uh, but that gives you a sense of self, a sense of being, knowing you know, where things are, how they all work, why they're there. Absolutely. And everything within a lodge in South Australia, if you go to one you know, that's up north out at Elizabeth or Gawler and then you head south all the way down to Brighton or Nalunga, it's exactly the same ceremony. Right. Or you could be in Victoria and, and Geelong where this program also shows. Absolutely. And, you know, those ceremonies are a little bit different than what we have here in South Australia. Right. But they are exactly the same, you know, throughout Victoria as well. Right. Yes. Yeah, so the, the context of what happens is, yeah, what's the word, universal. Exactly right. Yeah, okay. And everyone's gone through a similar ceremony of initiation throughout the entire world. Right. Okay, so we've got a photo of you dressed in the same regalia. Can you explain what the, the bits and pieces mean? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So this is my Grand Lodge regalia. So my official mm -hmm. title within Grand Lodge is the Director of Community Relations. Okay. Um, so it's why my apron's dark blue. So the Grand Lodge aprons are all dark blue with a gold trimming. You can see there on my cuff and my apron and maybe just at the bottom of my chain, um, two hands shaking. Um, mm -hmm. So that's my emblem of office. So that shows that I'm the Director of Community Relations. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Sturt Desert P on my cuff and apron, uh, representing South Australia in the Northern Territory. Mm -hmm. um, the three tours, um, or sort of upside down T's on my apron, that shows that I've served my lodge as master. Uh, so I've been master of a lodge, so the title of past master. Uh, and then within Grand Lodge, you're given a chain um, to wear when you reach a certain rank. Right. And wearing the tails? We do wear tails and a dicky bow on very formal occasions. Otherwise, you go to lodge dressed how I am tonight. Okay. Um, sometimes with a dinner suit and bow tie, other lounge so, suit and tie. So the whole purpose of this is so there's a sort of a dress code so that you all feel an equal? Absolutely. Everyone within a Freemason's Lodge is equal. Yep. Traditionally, Masons wore gloves to protect their hands. Now we wear because white gloves. Because they were gloves. stonemasons. Exactly yeah. right. And that's why we have aprons as well as a sort of nod to the stonemasons who, you know, worked in quarries. And Isn't that interesting? Um, how much as human beings we need to have these ties to the past um, because it makes us sort of feel human, I suppose. Exactly. And you can't learn from the mistakes of the past to go forward into the future as well. Mm. So uh, Yeah, well, we need to know where we've come from. Otherwise, exactly we have right. no idea where we're going. Quite right. Um, how often do you meet? Well, Lodge traditionally meets once a month, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes with an executive meeting, um, so where you go through accounts, minutes. You know, it is an association, so we do do the normal sort of things that an association would do with minutes, correspondence, treasurer's reports, all that fun, you know, administrative sort of stuff. Mm, that um, has and to then happen. we jump into, you know, a ceremony of some sort or maybe a little bit of education or a lecture about Freemasonry and where mm -hmm. it's come from and yep. maybe other parts of Freemasonry or Freemasonry from around the world. Uh, so, you know, traditionally one night a week, but if you ask my friends and family, they'll tell you I do a little bit more than that. Okay. Well, that's because you've got a, a position within the group. Exactly. Yeah. And I enjoy it. Um, yeah. you, know, you, you get messages from people, you know, from family members as well, who you've helped, with, you know, their grandfather or their father, and they've been so appreciative of that help. So they reach out and say thank you. And those are the little things that make it all the more wild. Well, I guess people are thinking probably, as I am at the moment, okay, so it's great to come together and to have a bit of a chat and go through some ceremony things that, you know, make you feel grounded. But what's the point of it all? Well, it gives you purpose, like we okay. were saying before. It gives but you it's that also, sense of belonging. But you also do a lot of quiet and private fundraising as well. Exactly right. We mm. do a lot of fundraising, um, you know, 
just recently we've donated some money to the Cancer Council of South Australia uh, so that they can get some really life-changing equipment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've donated community buses up in the Northern Territory and through the Alice Springs region to help people get to and from hospitals and shopping centres. It's the little things like that, um, you know, where we but operate this under goes, the radar. Yes, but this goes fairly quietly unaccoladed, really, doesn't it? Well, Freemasonry has always had a little bit of a stigma, you know, being that secret society, so people mm. don't really like to associate with it. And now, slowly, we're starting to scratch away at that and coming out of, you know, the shadows, so to speak. All right, speaking of coming out of shadows, we've got to take a short break and we'll back... Oh, there you are. We'll be back in a tick. We're talking about Freemasons and Freemasonry. Is Freemasonry right to say? Absolutely. Layton? It's a collective of Freemasons. Oh, it's Freemasonry. Is a... <laughs> You've done your homework. I like that. OK, so here in South Australia, there's a bit of a story going on because there's been this building on North Terrace for a long time. Big, tall building. Can't miss it, as you Can't said. Can't miss it. Straight off Can't opposite miss it. the university there on North Terrace, yep. 254. And... Behind that building, there's been a like a room that's been used a lot for the fringe, and what else was it used for? The Great Hall. It's been used for many functions. Is that over what it's the called, years. the Great Hall? Yeah, the Great Hall. Okay. Um, so it's been used for many functions over the years. Yes. Um, you know, it is hired out quite regularly yeah. as well for private functions. I've seen events. fringe shows there because it's sort of right in the heart of the city. It's below where uh, behind where the uh, synagogue place. Jewish synagogue used to yeah. be. Yeah, which is now a club, but. Um, Something important is happening there. So there is a proposal going around at the moment for us to develop the site. Um, unfortunately, that would involve the removal of the Grand Hall at the back. Um, but, but the heritage not, listed tower at the front will remain yes, uh, as is. Yes, but the Great Hall is not that great really anymore, is it? I've been it's, it's a bit heyday. tired. It's a yeah. bit. It's a bit warm, uh, and we think we could breathe life back in to the building and back into Adelaide and North Terrace as well. So mm -hmm. we're proposing hopefully with development approval pending, to build a 33-storey skyscraper, Adelaide's tallest building. Which, well, coincidentally, be, yeah. the Freemasons, when that hall was first built, was, was the tallest the building in Adelaide at its time. Oh, how brilliant. That's great. That's great. So uh, the building that's proposed will be what? Um, it, nothing's been decided yet. They're throwing around um, things like student housing, accommodation, hotel... Uh, we'd really love to see a restaurant and public viewing platform right up the right top. The How top. great would it be to that view be Adelaide Hills from North Absolutely. Terrace over the Parklands? Absolutely. As Adelaide is growing... Uh, I was in Melbourne recently and I can't believe how Melbourne has just gone... Whoop, Straight up. Yep. Just amazing. And the buildings, the architecture is fantastic and there's roads going through the buildings and everything. We don't so much have that here in South Australia, but you can see the beginnings of that are, are just yeah. about to happen. A great time to be alive here, And there's really. every available opportunity for that, but also some other exciting things that are happening there we're hoping to get people talking about. Um, we're in talks with the SA History Trust to hopefully try and bring them a home for the South Australian History Museum. So we've got a museum here in Adelaide, but it's yes, not we really have. of got, South Australian history. Well, we've got little bits of museums sort of all over the place. Greg Mackey, who's the CEO of that, has been on the program. We've talked about the History Trust quite a bit in previous programs. But, you know, as we said before, if we don't know where we came from, it's hard to know where we're going. And we actually have a fascinating history here Absolutely. in South Australia because unlike the rest of Australia, South Australia was settled by landed gentry from the UK uh, when they pushed out the First Nations people, unfortunately. And um, it means that the old families that were here in Adelaide, a lot of them have survived and have, you know, continued yeah. with whatever. And so the history of that's fascinating. But it's also fascinating because we've had so many people coming from other parts of the world and their history of being here, here in South Australia. Is here too, yeah. And ironically, some of those, well, not ironically, coincidentally, some of those families that founded South Australia were prominent well, Freemasons. Freemasons. So, you know, <laughs> we would love to be able to house at 254... Uh, you know, a history museum for South Australia. So, you know, that's been proposed. Including been your about. history. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, we were prominent builders within South Australia, quite literally. So we'd love to see it housed there and well, get the conversation Well, being stonemasons, of course, because it's, it's, it's a what bit we logical, do. really. Yes. But you don't. No, I don't. You're build, not, not a stonemason. Not at all. Far from it. Was your grandfather? No. No. Okay. So 
the interest in this has really just been part of being... Now, fundamentally, it's a men's group, isn't it? Absolutely. Yep. Um, there are some parts of it that uh, are female only as well yep. and some parts that are male and female. But the lodge itself is primarily a men's... Yep, very much. Now, not wishing to be controversial, because I'm not, because I actually think it's good for each sex to have their own yeah. private things as well. It's in, you know, joining together, it's good to men to be there, women to be there and then... And socialise amongst like-minded... Yeah, well, everybody, yeah... Yeah, I think, I think one of the things that's been difficult for men in the last few years is actually knowing where on earth men are supposed to be in society. Well, and gives them something to do. Like we've seen the resurgence of men sheds as well, who yes, we've had exactly. a great charitable partnership with as well. Right. Um, you know, because we see the impacts that they have on helping, you know, especially retired men with their mental health when they're struggling. Do you, do you think that's why um, it's often perceived as an older man's organisation? Because men who have been in business or had commercial lives in whatever form have now got the time to do things like this and love being involved in... Yeah, that could be part of it as well. And, you know, it is an ageing population, uh, you know, that we are seeing at the moment. So How many young blokes like you are involved? Oh, there'd easily be 100 minimum. That's uh, he- off the top here of in my South head. Australia. Here in South yep. Australia, um, you know, under the age of 40. It'd probably be close to 200, 250 maybe. Right, OK. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because I've heard of, known that you've been part of it for a long time, uh, the little insignia there, yep, that yep. you're wearing, just explain what that represents. So the square and compasses conjoined are pretty much the universal symbols of Freemasonry. Yep, we're zooming um, in slowly there for a close-up. So you can see that there is a triangle there and so what's the top so part? The compass. The compass, <laughs> There's a senior's moment. Um, so the compass obviously would have been used for Freemasons to mark out, I suppose, circles. Mark out circles, whatever. marking stone for, yep. you know, prepping And the work. triangle to get the, and the square corners square, yeah. Measuring it, um, you know, square. Mm-hmm. But, you know, most popular terms and colloquialisms that we use today have come from Freemasons. Yeah, yes, OK. Hit a few. So, giving someone the third degree, that's coming from the Freemasons. Right. Because we have a third degree ceremony and... Right, I didn't I'll know that. I'll leave that to your imagination. I didn't know that. Okay. Giving someone a square deal. Yes. Again, from the Freemasons. Square deal, Because, yes. you know, we teach that we act on the square and, you know, we treat everyone fairly. It's a square deal. Meeting yep. on the level. Yes. Meeting everyone as an equal. Yes. Again, another one from the Freemasons. Brilliant. Did see, even that is fascinating because, again, there's things from the past that have now sort of morphed into current language, but we don't know where they come from. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's just like Freemasonry as well. It's slowly developed and grown from the past into what it is today. I guess the secrecy of it all, because it, was, it uh, was sort of also associated with the Knights of the Templar at one point, or is it st- was that still part of...? There's still a connection there. So we have the Knights Templar here in South Australia and Northern oh, okay. Territory and across all of Australia um, right. and different parts of the what world. What does that really represent? So the Templars were a, a crusader... Um, I nights. can't believe you know all this the off the top of your head because, as we often say to people, um, we don't rehearse all this. We do it as a live show and I have no idea what I'm going to ask people until I ask them. And sometimes our guests look at me like, what are you going to ask me about? <laughs> and I have no idea, but it's interesting how conversations go. And I guess this is part of this whole thing of being able to meet with like-minded people to talk about things that you want to know about. Exactly right. Um, and that's one of the beautiful things about Freemasonry. Mm. Sorry, and I butted in right in the middle of a thought there you are about to expand on. The Knights Templars. Yes. So the Templars are um, a band of Crusader Knights uh, that were charged by the Pope to protect pilgrims travelling to Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were stationed and garrisoned at Jerusalem. Uh, and then at the fall of Jerusalem uh, to the Saracens, they fled. And We're talking back to the middle... The... Back into the early Crusades. Yes, yes. Um, So this is pre, oh, pre th- 13th it's century. Absolutely. Probably around about the 1200s. Right. So, you know, they've allegedly found the treasure at the base of King Solomon's Temple in Jerusalem and fled Jerusalem to Malta and then from Malta to all different parts of Europe. Do you mean those film stories are all true? Well, there's got to be some sort of truth to it, doesn't there? <laughs> do we have to go to Scotland to find the chalice and all that? Well, that did do wonderful things for Freemasonry, those movies. But that, I can believe that, yes. Because we all want to have a bit of that fantasy and connection with the past, I suppose. 
Well, we all want that sense of belonging, but Freemasonry's got that sense of intrigue and mystery to it, and I think that's what Certainly most has. people attract um, and gravitate towards it for. Yes. Yeah, do you enjoy the dress-up part? Who doesn't love a little bit of dress-up, Malcolm? <laughs> I like that. So what do you feel your future will be within the organisation? Because clearly you've progressed quite a way from starting off. Did, are you called a novice or something when you start? Uh, you're name? called an entered apprentice. Uh, right. And then you oh, go on to become a fellow craft, a fellow of the craft. Right. Uh, and then a master mason and then a master of a lodge and a past master. Right. Um, so, you know, the fate really isn't in my hands. It's in, um, you know, that of the membership and of Grand Lodge. Um, so I'm appointed by the Grand Master personally. Um, so, you know, I've always said I'm never going to ask, but if I am asked to do something, I'll you know, gladly up. give it my best and, sure. you know, do the best shot that I can. But I enjoy sure. supporting my lodge, the people around me and other lodges and other members within South Australia and the Northern Territory. Right. No, it's just lovely. It, you know, it's lovely to hear your commitment when you talk about it. But, but when you think about it, it's not a massive commitment. You live a normal life. You don't yep. live in the lodge, so to speak. But you can have a normal life but have this separate thing that is actually just for you, really. In yeah. your family, it's sort of just your special thing. And, you know, family and friends come along. My husband comes to events with me and, you know, if we have a big gala dinner and, you know, he knows other Freemasons, he knows their partners. Right. Our staff in the admin uh, office that do an amazing job right. become really good friends with them, so... You know, he enjoys coming along to the social side of things as well. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably common across whoever because it's just another way of meeting oh, the other partner of, oh, you're, oh, no, oh, oh, no, no, hang on, we've got to go for a quick break and we'll be back in a tick. A <laughs> special guest has been late and we've been talking about Freemasons and why you're a Freemason. So, I'm sitting at home, I'm watching this and I'm thinking, hmm, I'm actually really interested in that. How do I go about it? You explained it at the beginning how you went about it, but... So it's really easy. Um, you know, we do have a Facebook page. We're across all social media. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a website as well. All Grand Lodges have Facebook pages and websites. So anyone watching this interstate or uh, online, able to jump on to the relative website, or even through Google. Just Google just your state and Grand Lodge. Okay. Lodge um, an inquiry form. Or Freemason. Is, is yep. Any, Freemason any Victoria, of those Freemason words, Queensland. They should find you. Absolutely. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And just, you know, register your interest and someone from Grand Lodge, usually a membership coordinator or officer, will be in touch. Uh, they'll have a bit of a conversation with you, get, you know, your idea about what you think Freemasonry is and what you'd hope to get out of it. Do, do you think people really know what it is in advance? Um, or does the website sort of explain all that? The website gives a brief overview. Okay. Um, but it's, it's also a personal um, connection and choice. You know, you, you've got to be ready and wanting um, to go ahead and do it mm. you know, because you don't want to waste your time um, in the process either. So, you know, it, it's something that's really personal uh, you know, to the I individual. Get that. Yep, yep. So where do you want to go with it yourself? I'm happy, you know, working with, you know, the other members of our lodges. Just lodges where you are. Just where I am, plodding yep. along. Um, you know, it's quite enjoyable, um, you know, delivering ritual, learning bits of a script, so to speak, um, mm -hmm. you know, doing that and doing it well. And the so administrative I, I know side. it's not a religion as such, but it sounds a bit like things that would occur within church services, for example. Absolutely. Some of the things... Um, are... But it, it is a-religious, um, so you know you could yep. say that it's the religion of the world. I've yep. been in a lodge where you know we have what we refer to as the volume of the sacred law being sacred texts, you know, to rule and govern our lives, mm -hmm. you know, because everyone needs a set of morals, right? Yep. Um, but my volume might be different to yours. So yep. I've seen a Quran, I've seen the Holy Bible, I've seen um, you know the old Catholic religious Bible. I've seen so many different holy texts, up to five open in a room, and mm -hmm. I've sat next to Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, mm -hmm. within a lodge and we're all equal and we all share the that's same the good universal thing. faith. Absolutely, that's a good thing. It's been great talking to you, Leighton. Thank you so much. Thanks for having it's me, It's made Malcolm. it really clear, actually, what the lodge is without making it clear what the lodge is, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And I hope that's been helpful to you too. So thanks very much for being part of our time. Thank you for being part of our time. Keep yourself nice. Till next time on our time. Bye.